Hi, my name is Pablo Requena and I am a guitar maker, maker of classical Spanish guitars, classical and flamenco. Today in this video, what we are going to do is we're going to look at the mold, the solera mold. So I have a few here in the bench. I have three molds. They are different and I got them out because they all have different features. And what we're going to do is that usually in my videos you see me actually making or building a component of the guitar. In this case, we're not going to do that. We're not going to be making a mold, but I will explain how they are made and the different elements of the molds so that then you can do this yourself. So over here I have this mold, which it has, I'm going to put it flat on the bench, and basically these two sides are detachable and you end up having the base. This is what you call the solera. The solera is the basic element um, we need to be able to build the guitar with. Once you have all the elements of the guitar, then you need your molds to be able to bring them together. Uh, I did a video about it not long ago, and you can check it out on YouTube, and in that video you can see how all the elements come together into the solera mold. But in this one we're actually going to see what is the solera, how it's made and, and so on. So the basic part is the base, what you call solera, and once you have your center line going all the way along, which is very important in the guitar, we always build following the center line, you then need your template. For this one, it's for a smaller instrument, it's for a replica of a Torres, and usually you make half a template. And once you have the shape, you also need to build a template like this one. And what happens is that they fit perfectly. So you can see this is a perfect match. And this template needs to be roughly about 50 millimeters wide all the way along. And I will show you in a minute what we need this for. Once we have your templates and you use it to mark the outline on the instrument, the mold also, or the, the solera, also needs to be about 50 millimeters bigger than the guitar itself. So over here you can see there is an area which it's, it looks slightly different. I don't know if it shows in the video, but basically it's a scooped out area. So what it means is that, um, as you probably know by now, the, the, the soundboard has a dome into it and this area is going to allow for the dome to go in without pressing into it. So if I have a ruler in here, what happens is that the bottom of this area, there's a gap here of about 3 millimeters, 2.5 to 3 millimeters. And then over here, this is more or less where the lower harmonic bar would go. You can see the gap is still there and then up here is flat. And that's important because as we put the soundboard face down, we need to make sure that this area is not going to be interfering with the dome that you have in your soundboard already. Okay, so once we have done the, um, the scooped out of the, of the uh, belly, which you can do with a cha spoke chafe or you can do with uh, sandpaper on a block, there are different ways of doing it. Then we need to look at the neck area because not only the, this area is not completely flat, you've got this area which is not flat, but also the neck is flat, but there is a slight angle into it. So with a straight edge, if I put it in here and it's resting at the bottom of the guitar, then it's also resting at the 12th fret position, then we should have a 1.5 millimeter gap at this end. And that is because when we build the guitar and the guitar comes out of the mold, we need to have a slight angle of the neck so that the neck comes forward very slightly. And that is very important because um, it will contribute to have a good setup once the guitar has been built. There are different lines of thinking in this. Some people prefer to work without a neck angle and the whole thing is completely flat. 
but the way that I build them, um, it really works having a little bit of an angle on the neck. Also, it depends on the, on the amount of dome that you have in your soundboard, because if the dome is very deep and it comes up quite a bit, then you need ne less neck angle. So you need to work that out for yourself with the kind of instrument that you're building and with the kind of setup that you want to have. Right, so now that we have the base of the mold, we are going to look at the sides of the mold. And these ones are made of three layers of 18 millimeter plywood. You can see them here very clearly because there are different types of, of plywoods. Um, so each one of them is 18 millimeters, so that gives you enough thickness to, to do the job here. And this is where this template comes in place. Because once you have this template made, and you have to make sure that this shape here is really accurate and nice and not just only smooth, but also very even and no bumps or anything like it, because this is the one that we're going to use to make these pieces. And so basically, we are going to start from a piece of plywood slightly bigger so that we can place this on top and we're going to trace a line all the way around and then we're going to cut it off in the bandsaw. And we're going to cut it in the bandsaw so that it's very slightly bigger than the template itself. So that then we can attach the template into the piece of plywood and using a router with a trimming bit, then we can trim everything off so that they have exactly this shape. So you do that to all six pieces. You have three in here and three in the other one. And once you have them done, all you need to do is to bring them together, glue them in such a way that they all line up and they are all flush properly. So that is how you make the sides. But the sides have a few things into it. You can see that here we have a little rebate. This rebate is 2.5 up here or along here is 2.5 millimeters deep and in terms of the width is 8 millimeters wide. You can make it a little bit deeper, it, it will be fine. Um, in terms of the depth there, I like 2.5 millimeters because that's usually the average thickness on my soundboard. So I know that when I put the soundboard face down here and the soundboard is slightly oversized, then I know that as I put in the side, it will clamp down the soundboard into the solera. And you can see here, there's a little rebate there, so that's where the excess of the soundboard will be going. The other element that we have on the, uh, on the sides of the mold is these dowels. So always make sure that you cut the rebate before fitting the dowels. I've made a mistake in the past of putting the dowels in, doing everything, and then, oh, I need to do the rebate, and then you have to cut them off again because they are in the way. So, rebate first, dowel second. Once you have the rebate and the mold, or, or the side of the mold, to find the position for the dowels, what you do is put it in place, make sure that it follows the line, uh, let me put it in, like that, make sure that it follows the line of the guitar properly, and then you're going to drill through the solera and the sides of the mold which means that then you get a perfect alignment between the solera and the sides and then these dowels will allow you to bring these blocks in in the right place every time. The other thing that we have is a way of fixing the sides into the solera. What I use, I've got one over here, I use this type of bolt and this is no more than a captive nut with an hexagon or an alien um, head in there. So I will put this into the, um, well, you need to drill first the holes for these ones to go in and you do them in the same way as we did the ones for the, for the dowels. And once you have the holes, you fit the nut into the side and then you have the bolt to go in through it and that way you can keep everything in place 
very steadily. I like these bolts as well because the head is quite wide and I don't even need a, a washer or anything like it. So it's a very good way of connecting those elements together. And then the final thing in this mold is, I'm going to put this back in place, the final element is this beam underneath the mold. And this is here because this mold being made of plywood, it can move over time with changes in humidity and changes in temperature. And we want to make sure that the neck angle is always going to be right. I always check before I use the mold anyway, and if I need to adjust it, I can always put in a little chim or a little bit of paper and descend. But having this piece of plywood here, it helps to keep everything steady. This one is basically four layers of 12 millimeter plywood, and I used, um, I laminated it because as you laminate the plywood, you make it even more stable than it already is. So, um, I have these two blocks here, which are basically stabilizers so that the mold is nice and flat into the bench. But it also is quite handy, the fact that you can clamp things and you can stick the clamp underneath the mold. That's quite useful, especially when it comes to clamp in the end block, which you would see in the uh, video that I did about assembling the guitar that you actually need a, t a clamp like this to be able to clamp that block in. And then I think this is everything that you need to know about this type of mold. Then we're going to go into the next mold. I'm going to take this one out of the way. I'm going to put it there. In this mold, you can see it's very similar. Well, it's bigger, it's for a bigger, it's for a full size instrument, but it's built in a very similar way. You've got this beam here to, to make sure that everything is stable and doesn't um, lose the angle there. And I've got big chunky sides with location dowels and bolts. But what's different about this mold is that the way that I achieved the clearance for the soundboard was by adding a layer of cork into the hole of the neck but obviously not in this area. I have this little block here because you can see there that's where the harmonic bars go and when I clamp the soundboard in place I want to make sure that there is good support underneath. I don't want that to be hollow and then if I press too much I could damage something. But the rest of the... Um, well this one is not long enough. But you can see here you've got good clearance and you know that as you put the soundboard face down here, the belly of the soundboard is going to have no interference whatsoever. And this is a very easy way of creating this relief area instead of having to be sort of using the spoke shave or sandpaper, which sometimes is really quite, quite tough to, to get that done. Um, if you don't want to use cork, you could use a thin piece of plywood, uh, four millimeters plywood or six millimeter plywood would do exactly the same job. But in terms of having the slope in the neck and all the other elements, it's exactly the same. Now I have a third mold here. I'm going to get these two blocks out of the way. I'm just going to put them here. And I have a third mold, which it's for a different job. This mold is not for making a guitar. It's actually a mold to be able to remove the back of an instrument. And it's for restoration work. But the element that you wanted to see is these brackets, which I've got one here. And what it means is that with this type of mold, so, uh, you can build any shape instrument that you want to build while with this other type of mold you are very restricted on, on the kind of instrument you want to build because you cannot change the shape at all you can change the depth or other things but not the outline of the instrument with this one you can because basically all you go all you have is this oh, this um, blocks with a bolt and a wing nut at the bottom and you have slots all the way around 
and you can see that all you need to do is to decide where you're going to put this block and then fix it at the bottom. So in this one I have the outline of the guitar that I'm working with, which you can see over there. This is in two levels for a different reason. Like I say, this is not to make a guitar with, this is for some restoration work that I need to do. But you can have this type of solera with this type of uh, brackets and it will work exactly in the same way. So once you have your slots all the way around the solera and you make these brackets, you can see here I can adjust this. Can you see how these brackets follow this line? And all I need to do is to bring them into the right place and then lock them. You can see this is really a very practical mold because you can build virtually any shape instrument and then I'm just locking and just locking the blocks in place. So you can see this this is very versatile and uh, you have quite a lot of movement here so there would be a good range in there. So the size of these blocks I've just taken some dimensions and writing them here just in case you want to do the same. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. This is how I worked it out that they work for this one. But in here basically you have in this block these two faces they must be 90 degrees to each other and then this side is 75 millimeters wide by 85 millimeters high, 20 millimeters up here, 28 millimeters there, and then this angle it's 105 millimeters, uh, sorry, 105 degrees, and then this one here is 97 degrees. For this instrument, well, for this mold, um, I would I should say better, um, I have this little notch, and you can also use that for um, you know for your mold because it's quite useful. When it comes to fit the back, you can use an elastic band to hook it into opposite brackets to be able to clamp the back on. Uh, usually, I fit it in with tape, but for this job in particular, this method is going to be much more useful. So, here you have different elements of different molds, and I wouldn't recommend one over another one. I think they all have benefits and you know, like everything, advantages and disadvantages. Um, this mold is, is much more versatile, while this one is more restricted, but then this mold, you'll find that it's easier to fix things in place, and perhaps you can be more accurate with, with that work in here. It's not so easy to clamp things into it. But, like everything, you have to make your own decision to see which one works best for you. So, um, thank you very much for watching my videos. Before I go, I just want to say as well to check out my courses, because you will have a much more in-depth view of how to build an instrument. Um, so if you're interested to come and build a guitar with me, check out my website, which will be in the description of the video. And that's it for today. So thank you for watching, and I hope this is helpful.